And welcome back, everyone, to the week of Who Would Win. Today's Who Would Win comes to us from Jay Scott. Well, that's the question. Who went to the fight? Mark Grayson, a.k.a. Invincible from Invincible, versus Steven Universe from Steven Universe. I don't think actually that's Universe's is his last name. That's just everyone everyone knows him by. Um, this fight has two different variants. We go by what he's like in the anime, an early, early era Mark. He's just starting out. Or you go by end of the series Mark. But at the end of the comics, a spoiler for anyone who's only watched the anime. Mark gets seriously strong by the end of the series. Uh, Steven is, but let's start with Steven. Steven was, is a human gem hybrid. Gems are, it's kind of hard to say exactly. I, I don't watch Steven Universe. My sister loves Steven Universe. I will say this. The way it's depicted, gems seem to be, and you can correct me, all you Steven Universe uh, lovers down there, uh, the way I've seen it interpreted, are a sentient race of gems. Human, they're humanoid. And they take on that form, but they are gem. They are gemstones. They just are human by all accounts. They're even able to reproduce technically. Um, and all gems have kind of their own bases of ability, things along those lines. Well, uh, Stephen's mother was a gem. I believe it was Rose Quartz is what she had. And he has his gem in his stomach from being born. But the thing is, there can only kind of be one, from what I understand. And so she actually had to sacrifice herself for Stephen to be born. Uh, so, with that said, he gained all the abilities of his mom, he just doesn't really know how to tap into him well. Steven, being half gem, is highly, is more durable and highly pow more pow uh, powerful than the average human. Capable of taking a lot of strong hits, he's capable of, uh, uh, he is capable of many different abilities, including, uh, his, I can't remember if it's bubble or his energy shield. Um, but let me rephrase that. I can't remember if his shield is a product of more of like bubble based abilities, uh, or if the, I'm looking it up right now, actually, Steven Universe. So, uh, and Steven, um, Steven Universe, uh, where is Steven? There's Steven. Uh, th there he is now. So yeah, it's, it's energy shield. It's a shield he can produce on his own. Uh, it's used mostly for defense, Purposes as his ability, as his style of fighting is not straight offense. He's, he focuses a bit more on the defense when it comes to uh, how he fights. But he is still very capable with the shield, capable of launching it like, say, Captain America, uh, using it in the quick succession. And I believe he was able to make two after a while. Um, so, yeah, um... He can also fuse with other gens, but we're not going to be using that here. He is, like I said, a skill, a pretty solid martial arts, including knowing wrestling moves, uh, capable of easily beating someone normally. Uh, he's a shapeshifter naturally, usually only going like like pink, um, like, um, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm reading this verbatim. Uh, it's been a while since I've done Steve, so forgive me. And I'm not going to get people getting on my case for not being as prepared as I should have been. Uh, he has some level of natural shape shifting, where he shape shifts uh, in one episode. He shape shifted his hands into cat fingers, but lost control of it rather quickly. He's shown to be much better at using this ability in Too Short to Ride, being able to stretch various parts of his body at re will repeatedly. Um, he's also got a, he also uh, his age can fluctuate uh, uh, through his state of mind. This doesn't really do much except make him older. Uh, he does have a monster state, which turns him into a giant pink Godzilla, more or less. He has superhuman strength, uh, capable of lifting and destroying boulders. He's lifting crates. Uh, he has super durability. He can even survive in space to a certain de degree. He has gem weapon resistance. He is uh, capable of creating a pink diamond shield. Uh, due to possessing the pink diamonds, gemstone shares uh, most, if not all, of its unique abilities, including holding and creating an energy shield. Uh, because his, uh, these are powers of maternal, he is required to feel a strong need to protect something. The shield is very durable and is even capable of, uh, blocking, uh, blocking off some, uh, planetary level attacks. Uh, overuse of the shield, uh, would exhaust him over time, uh, though he did train to overcome the weakness. He can throw the shield as projectile, as I said. His shield can vibrate, um, and disable magical, uh, constructs, uh, through so, but that doesn't really mean that much. Um... He's uh, he can't really do much. He does have aura projection, but that doesn't really mean much because he had to be 
interacting with blue and yellow diamond in the astral plane. Uh, although this might be while he was interacting with them. He projected a powerful pink aura that convinced him he was truly a pink diamond reincarnated. Uh, he has healing abilities, which can heal animals, uh, people, and plants to a certain degree. Uh, Steven, uh, Steven's uh, ability is, uh, is, sorry, he possesses the ability to resurrect from the dead, uh, sorry, resurrect the dead with his magic tears, uh, which is messed up. He can re uh, reverse corruption, shatter reversal, um, uh, he can completely repair a shattered gem and self-heal. Final animation or give life to plant life where he created pumpkins, uh, pumpkins, sorry, watermelons. Uh, pebble animation. Apparently he's able to turn to, uh, his sweat can turn into inanimate pebbles. When, uh, sorry, inanimate pebbles into living pebbles. I don't get that. He has his bubble shield, which is also extremely powerful and durable. Um, shape alteration, uh, bubble, he can create bubble gloves for fighting, pop in the bubble to create kind of like an explosive effect, uh, empathic tele telepathy, mind transfer, mind link, psych uh, psychometric recognition, uh, astral projection, electrical interference, uh, T he can control TV based on his emotions, speed of descent regulation. Wait, what? Uh, can levitate his body, he manipulates gravity based on his emotions. That's a unique ability. His pink state is, in essence, a superpowered state like Super Saiyan almost. He can create a barrier that's made of hexagons. Uh, he can modify his own body. He's got hexagonal force fields, power augmentation, empathic uh, telepathy, and again, fight animation. All that is enhanced beyond, um, yeah, is beyond his regular abilities. Uh, weaknesses, though, he has because of his unique hybrid physiology, he still has human in him, so he has uh, issues with that. He often has he's often had has often had little to no control over his gem abilities, which tend to fluctuate erratically. He has trained to uh, get better control over this. Uh, his greatest personality, though, was his immaturity as he was younger. He's grown more mature, but still has immaturity to him. And yet, yeah, Stephen is very powerful indeed. Mark, it, so Mark is the son of um, Nolan Grayson, and I can't remember his mom's name. Viltrumite and a human. Uh, Viltrumites are, in essence, um, what, as uh, Death Battle kind of put it when they did Omni-Man, if you cry, combine a Kryptonian with a Saiyan, they don't have the energy production that's our, um, the energy absorption that Kryptonians do, but they have the, more or less, the Zenkai that Saiyans do. And they live well, very long, very much like Saiyans and Kryptonians, thousands and thousands of years. And they, and this, the older they get, the stronger they get. Mark being very young means that he's got a lot of growing and uh, getting stronger to do in the basis of the early parts of the series. And that said, even at his peak in the for season one, we'll say, he's still among the stronger uh, heroes on Earth, capable of lifting the heavy objects, at least a couple tons worth, capable of delivering very powerful shots, very fast, very durable. But against superior foes, he suffers very quickly. His immaturity and experience really hampers him on this. That said, if you are if you are to look at end of series Mark Grayson, spoilers, he is arguably the strongest Viltrumite there is at that point. Surpassing his father, surpassing some of the other, uh, like Thrag and all that stuff, who you'll, who you'll see later on in the series and all that for the anime watchers. He is... Among, he is among the strongest of his race at that point. And so to kind of get you an idea how strong that would be, let's just look at Omnian, who's not even the strongest Viltrumite. Spoilers again. So he, this is a guy who cleaved through the, their version, the world's version of the Justice League, minus him, uh, which isn't that impressive when you think about it. Blew up a meteor the size of Texas, or was going to destroy Texas. Allegedly, I believe it was the size of Texas, they say. Flew so fast... He ignited a planet's atmosphere and destroyed the planet, and he was fine. Uh, is strong enough to uh, strong enough to go toe to toe with Battle Beast, who is strong enough to go toe to toe with um, the strongest of Viltrumites. Uh, Battle Beast is messed up when you actually see how strong he really is. Um, and uh, Mark has grown fast, uh, stronger than all of them. Come on, the man with Mark and like what other Viltrumite destroyed a planet by crashing into it. And, yeah, so they are, Mark got nuts powerful by the end of the series. So all of his 
abilities are enhanced. He's well into like his hundreds of hundreds of hundreds, if not thousands of years old at that point. So he's gotten that much worth of experience under its belt at that point. So if we're looking at end of the series, Mark versus Steven, it's going to be Mark hands down. He is essentially a Superman clone at that point. He is bar none a Superman clone. And as strong as Steven is, there's no way he can go up. I, I think Homelander would be a much better fight. He's nowhere near, Homelander's nowhere near as strong uh, as Omni-Man is. Hell, even Mark, even Mark versus Homelander would actually be a pretty good fight. Um, but anyway, yeah, end of series Mark would obliterate Steve. But what about, let's just say, season one Mark from the anime? And obviously that part in the manga or comic as well. That Mark's, I mean, as powerful as that Mark is, this is where the fight would be very interesting. Mark might see Steven as the enemy. Who knows why they start fighting in this case. Um, Steven's like, wait, he's not a gem. And so their fights go down. Now, physically speaking, Mark's still got the edge, I think. He also is capable of natural flight, which gives him a lot more of a mobility advantage in the fight than Steven does. Even if Steven is capable of controlling his descent of gravity, that doesn't really matter when you're, the person has a better... Um, area of effect over you. So, the fight would continue for a while. Steven is blocking shots. I do think his shield can take the hit, though, from Steven. Got bubble shield as well. But unfortunately, he's just not able to dish out enough damage to really put Mark down, I think. And I think that's the real big thing here, is that in terms of damage dealt versus damage taken, I think they're relatively equal in kind of how they can deal damage, it's just that Mark physically is capable of taking more damage at this point. And the amount of attack power that, and you know, and I just contradicted myself, the amount of attack power Steven has versus the amount of attack power Mark has are very different based on their opponents. Steven, Steven's energy shield might hurt, but he doesn't actually, at least in his standard form, have an ability that's really capable of taking Mark down. He'd have to go into his transformed pink state to, and boost everything. Even then, they're going to be clashing. And even though uh, Mark has, Steven has um, martial arts experience, I think I just regularly fighting monsters would give Mark at least an equal amount. And it's more fighting with like with your fits and knowing how to block and all that versus wrestling moves. And Mark probably watched some wrestling too, so he probably knows these kind of moves. It comes down to who's ultimately got the better firepower. And I will say this, if this fight can go to the point where Steven transforms into his giant pink Godzilla form, if it can get to that, uh, then uh, he's a, uh, then I don't think Mark actually has a chance of winning. Um, basically, unless Steven calms down and is able to revert back to his normal form, that monster form, I think, will jack Mark up pretty hard. Because Mark, we saw, wasn't really capable of handling giant monsters on his own by the end of the series yet. It, that's exactly what that would be. And it's a monster with other abilities as well. So if Steven at any point goes into the giant monster form, Steven wins that fight. The question is, would he? I think, and let me just see the, uh, okay, due to all of his emotional grief, PTSD, and sense of purpose, uh, purposelessness, he viewed himself as a monster and therefore transformed to, uh, to one at the end of everything's fine. In this state, he is a bestial mentality. Um, so the question the question would just become, is Steven even capable of turning into this form anymore? Capable? I would imagine yes. Likely? Now since things have matured up, probably not. So then the question just becomes, then, does, you know, Pink Steven have enough power to just put Mark down? And again, I don't think he does. Even transforming, I think he definitely would gain some extra strength on Mark. But Mark is just has naturally stronger strength and better durability, I think, than Steven does. So he is going to be hitting harder, faster, and going to be able to take more hits than Steven. I think it just turns into a battle of attrition at that point. And... Mark gets the final knockout blow. The question would maybe become, is Steven down for the count, or does he go monster in that form? Again, hypothetically, he could go the monster form if for some reason he just felt hopeless, lost without for all that. I don't think he would, though. I think he's just maybe knocked out cold. And Mark is the winner. I think St 
Steven gets a guaranteed win against Young Mark if he goes into monster form. Other than that, though, I think it's really a battle of attrition. Who outlasts who? Who gets more damage dealt to him? And I would think that's um, that's Steven. Steven gets more damage dealt to him, and uh, Mark would just outlast him. He's got just the natural endurability and, uh, and endurance over him. And he's still pretty strong. Like, he survived a train blasting through and ripping people apart. Survived multiple shots from his dad, who was not messing around. And it didn't take... And, it, and he was still able to get on his feet until on the man just put him into the ground and started beating the living snot out of him. So, yeah, I think in the Battle of Attrition, Mark would win that. Steven can win against young Mark if he goes into the Godzilla form. But that's, I think, really his only real avenue. This is just my opinion, though. I will go Steven... For, or Mark, sorry. I will go Mark for definitely his adult self, like his, his the end of series Mark. Yeah, that beats Steven hands down. But I'll go Mark. But I'm not saying it'd be an easy fight for Mark either. Don't don't misunderstand me. I think it would be a slugfest, kind of. But this is just my opinion. Let me know what you think. Until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.